where we are. And I thank the Lord for another opportunity that we can break God's word together and to pray together, sing songs, or at least share songs together. Uh, it is um, July 3rd, 2024. And as we just dive into God's word just for a few minutes, we do, as Elder Gregory spoke, we do want to thank the Lord for our independence also in him. Also, I note on tomorrow, uh, our pastor and his wife will be celebrating their 20 years of marriage, 20th anniversary. And so the fireworks will begin. So, and we thank the Lord for us, our sweet little first lady and our pastor. We thank the Lord for word of life. And so tonight, the Apostle Paul just want to speak a word to us. And we're going to look at what the Apostle Paul has to say about our independence in him. And so we're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 3. And he's just, he actually, Paul made a whole sermon out of one verse. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 will be our little charge for tonight. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 16, and then we'll pray. The apostle tells the young Timothy, as well as Titus, but he's sharing this specifically with Timothy. Verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And he breaks that one verse down, and it's a sermon in one verse. He says, uh, uh, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Now, one more time before we pray. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Just for a few minutes, the mystery of godliness, the mystery of godliness. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity just to break the word together, uh, to feast on your word so we can continue to grow, so we can truly await your second coming and have that complete independence from sin. And so until then, Lord, we're looking for your word to uh, encourage us, strengthen us, and to take us on. Lord, let you be seen, let you be heard. We thank you in your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The mystery of godliness. If, if you please, the mystery of godliness. When Paul is addressing Timothy, and we note that Timothy and Titus, uh, actually some people say the book of Timothy and, and the book right after that, Titus, is that the Apostle Paul is uh, sharing these words to the pastors and of course, these are young preachers. And when God makes this address to Timothy through Paul, Paul is looking through the lens of years of experience, years of, ex of ex being uh, uh, exposed to, 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 the, to the God of the heavens. And, and, and on top of that, Paul looked at Timothy like his own son, in the gospel. I'm pretty sure when he looked at Timothy, you know, he thought about himself when he was younger and being a preacher or being a pastor. But he also took Timothy in his arm as a young man that is, is, is pastoring. He's going to be in his church. And Paul's life has started from spring. Now he's just about in wintertime. His life is just about over. He's And these letters were addressed during his first and second imprisonment in transition of being in prison to Rome. And so he addresses to Timothy about the mystery of godliness. He's not sharing something with Timothy that he 
uh, don't know about. This is something that he has experienced since he has gray hair and he has been on the battlefield for a long time. And so when he addresses Timothy, he says here in verse 16, and I like how he begins to say this. He, as far as the mystery of God, he says, and without controversy. So in other words, in Paul's mind, as he's beginning to share this gospel to Timothy, the young pastor, the young man that he looks at as his son almost, you know, he loved Timothy, but he says, with experience and without doubt, he says, great and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. So that means that Paul must have had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Paul must have been through something because he says, without controversy, without any interruptions, without any doubt, without any reservations, I know that the mystery, the, 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 the mystery of godliness in my relationship with God and my experiences with God, great is the mystery. It's without controversy of godliness. Paul is speaking through experience. And he goes on to say, as he looked over the years, and now he's almost ready to become a martyr. He says, great is the mystery of godliness because he says, number one, God was manifested in the flesh. Hmm. You know, I think about Matthew chapter one and verse 23. Matthew chapter one and verse 23 says, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted. God is with us. Mm. When he first got started, you know, he said God was manifested in the flesh. And then I thought about 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1 where it says, uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then when you drop down to verse 14 in John chapter 1, and the word was made flesh. God was manifested in the flesh. And even Jesus told uh, Philip in John chapter 14 and verse nine, Jesus said to Philip himself, when you have seen me, you have seen the father. So God was manifested in the flesh. Jesus himself is God. Some people say, well, he was a good man. Oh, he was a good prophet. He was able to heal, uh, but he was not God. But the Bible clearly points out that Jesus not only uh, uh, was God, he is God. Think about it. God was, as Paul put it to Timothy, he says, God was manifested in the flesh. So when Jesus walked the earth, that was God walking the earth. When Jesus was on the ship with the disciples and the storm came, which storms will come in our lives, and then the waters began to flow into the boat, and sometimes storms hits us so hard that water seems like it's coming into our lives and we're about to drown, but it was Jesus, God himself, that spoke to the water. He spoke to the winds. It must have been God because a mere man can say, peace be still. The water stopped shaking and, 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 and convulsing and the wind stopped blowing. What kind of man is this? He must be God. And then all of a sudden, he ran across somebody that was blind. Jesus, talking about God. The man had been blind and because of the transgression of God's law, sin causes blindness. We won't even go into that. It caused all kinds of sickness and pain. But anyway, Jesus, God himself, spat on the ground made little mud pies, put it on the man's face, on his eyes, told him to go wash his eyes. And all of a sudden, this man can see. I've never seen a man walk the earth and was able to do that. I've never seen a man since, and I just had a birthday. I have never seen a man do those things. A woman was having a burial, a, a funeral for her son. 
and Jesus and his disciples were going into the town and, and was passing the funeral procession. All Jesus did was just touch the, the he just touched the briars. He just touched the casket. And somebody came alive. That's God. Paul knew what he was saying. He said, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Then he says he was justified in the spirit. My mind went back about the Holy Spirit at Jesus' baptism. Hmm. That's Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says that uh, when John had baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven as a dove. He was justified by the Holy Spirit. He was accepted by the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, uh, and the Holy Spirit says, you know, because this is uh, uh, the baptism, I just can't come in any way. I can't come as the wind. He came like a dove. Paul said, great is the mystery of godliness mm. manifested in the flesh, then approved by the Holy Spirit at his baptism. Then he says, he was seen of angels. I like how the clear word, the clear word put it. It says, also, he was worshipped by angels. Great is the mystery of godliness. You know, I read over in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9 and 10, where the ancient of days had left the holy place and went into the most holy place. And the Bible says there was angels upon top of angels, thousands upon thousands and ten thousands and thousands of thousands of angels. And of course, verse 13 and verse 14 tells us that Jesus entered there, but that the angels are all around. The Bible also tells us in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 11 how uh, that the angels surround Jesus. You know, they praise him. They worship him. Paul seeing this. You know, he was blinded by a light. I'm pretty sure you know Paul is saying great it's the mystery of godliness. This is who we serve. This is who we serve as Christians, as commandment-keeping Christians. The world cannot understand, but the but great is the mystery of godliness. He is worshipped by angels. He is, he is served by angels. He is uh, uh, protected by angels. He has been seen of angels. Great is the mystery of godliness. And then he was preached unto, unto the Gentiles. So how can you not preach? How can you not tell the world about somebody that's God that was manifested in the flesh, that was justified by the Holy Spirit, that was seen of angels, not to mention the angels came and moved a stone from the tomb. And, you know, this is the God that we are serving. And then he was seen by the Gentiles, preached unto, unto the Gentiles. Hmm. Mm. Acts 18 and verse 6, Acts 13 and verse 46, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 11. The gospel went to the world, to the Gentiles from J Jerusalem, uh, uh, Judea, Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the world. And the thing about it, I like about, uh, but but he was he was preached unto, unto the world. We have to let the world know. Got to let the light shine. Great is the mystery of godliness. And, you know, as I look at this, and before I get on the part where about believed on in the world, let's go there now. And believed on in the world, how we have been brought out of the world. How we were once in the world. The gospel went to us, the Gentiles. Then it was believed on by them in the world because it was believed by me. Here we are. It was believed by you. Here you are. We were once in the world. Guess what? We were once in the world because 
Uh, we were once sinking in sin. We were far from the peaceful shore. We were very deeply stained within. And guess what? Some of us were sinking that looked like we was not going to rise no more. But the master that was preached to us, to the Gentiles, the, the master that was in flesh, God that was in the flesh and justified of the spirit, heard our despairing cry. And from the waters of sin, from the waters of depression, from the waters of not knowing our, our purpose in life, from the waters of discontent, of the waters of stress and anxiety, uh, from the waters that cause us to even, some of us may have wanted to commit suicide. He, he rescued us from the waters and lifted us up. Now safe are we. He, the mystery of godliness preached to unto the world. And last but not least, point number seven, in that one verse, in that one verse, then the God that was manifested in the flesh was received up into glory. Now, you know, my mind goes back as we bring this, in this independence day to Acts chapter one, verse nine through 11. Received up into glory. Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. After Jesus had been here three and a half years, or 33 and a half years. After Jesus was put on the cross 31 AD, Friday, as they say, Good Friday. And then he, he died before the sun set that Sabbath. While he was on the cross that Friday, they say the Good Friday. He slept in the tomb all day Sabbath. And then he rose Sunday morning. Mm. And he hung around for 40 days after that. And then he gathered the crowd on his last day. The crowd gathered, and I believe it's Mount Olivet. And he gave his final words of encouragement. And he said a few verses above that in Acts chapter 1 and verse 9. He said, uh, you shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and he shall come upon you. And then... The Bible tells us in Acts chapter one that when he finished this discourse, speaking of angels, the Bible says that he was received up into heaven. The crowd is standing all around Mount Olive. Their eyes was fixed on Jesus, the God that was in flesh. All of a sudden, this God also defies the law of gravity. Am I looking at a movie? Am I looking at TV? All of a sudden, Jesus is beginning to, to rise up. I don't see any strings. And he looks at his disciples and the people as he rises up and he defies the law of gravity. And, and Superman does not have anything on him, not even black Adam. And he began to, to rise. And of course, angels had something to do with that, the spirit of prophecy tells us, because he was received up. But the Bible says, as he received up into the clouds with the angels and he disappeared, and the people were sitting there and standing there, and they were looking up. And they were just looking up. They could not say nothing. Their mouths, some of them, their mouths were open. They were just looking up. But two of the angels had stayed by and says, and the, and the angels kind of looked around at the crowd. And the angel said, of course, there were women in there too. Ye men of Galilee and all of you people that are around, why stand ye here gazing up into the heavens? Why are you standing here looking up in the sky? Why is everybody around here standing up with their heads looking straight up in the air? Why are you standing here gazing? 
Confirmation is coming. The mystery of godliness, Paul tells Timothy. The angels, which were two men at first, but they were angels, said this same Jesus, this same Jesus, while you stand in here looking up into heaven with some of your mouths are open, this same Jesus that you saw that by the law of gravity, this same Jesus, which is God manifested in the flesh that, that caused the storms and the winds of our lives to cease, that brought, uh, uh, he, he took away the blindness and we were dead and he brought us back to life out of sin. This same Jesus, that when sometime the devil gets into people and demons try to get to us, he rebuked the demons. This same Jesus that you seen go into heaven. And I love the confirmation. They said, likewise, he shall return. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because when Jesus first came, he had to die for sin. In order for us to place our sins on him, in order to be saved. And when he went back to heaven, the devil is still down here. COVID and all of this stuff is still down here. But the angel says, but this same Jesus that you saw go up into heaven shall come back. Likewise, he died for sin the first time, but he's coming back the second time to get rid of sin. We don't have no excuse now to be dead to sin, we don't have no excuse to die because of sin, because Jesus has made a way. So if we accept him according to John 3, 16, we shall have eternal life if we accept him in John 3, 16. So this same Jesus that you saw go into heaven shall likewise come back. And then one day soon, and I'm pretty sure the apostle Paul, if he could, I don't know if he had saw what John said, over in Revelation 21, in verse 1, he says, Then I saw a new heaven, and I saw a new earth. I wonder if Paul could go to verse 4 in Revelation 21, where there shall be no more death, no more pain, no more suffering, no more craziness in the world, no more disease and sickness and craziness from the White House to the crack house. There will be no more. This same Jesus that you saw go into heaven shall likewise return. Great, Pastor Timothy, is the mystery of godliness. Great word of life is the mystery of godliness. So as we celebrate independence tomorrow, make sure we celebrate our independence in Christ. Thank God for the mystery of godliness. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I tell you what, I love the book of Timothy. I thank you, Jesus, for the Apostle Paul. He wasn't just speaking from off the top of his head. He was going through all of that. And he said near the end of his life, great is the mystery of godliness. One day soon, Lord, one day soon. But until then, help us to hold on. Yes, Lord, we're the church militant right now, but help us to hold on because one day soon the church triumphant will be triumphant and you shall come and take us home. But until then, we declare our independence now. We love you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. And this same Paul, Lord, you used to write over half of the New Testament. So we thank you, Lord. Have mercy. Help us save us from ourselves and save us from the wrath to come. Help us to share the three angels' messages before it's too late. We thank you in your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.